What if you could reduce as much cortisol in just a couple of minutes as you would meditating? I think the main problem is that most people don't have time to put the things in place to actually reduce cortisol. You know, you're going through the day, you're eating your diet the way that you should, you're exercising, you're doing the big levers, but then there's these little things that throw you off. A little bit of stress or stress accumulating through the day ends up allowing cortisol to spike in the evening, making it so that fuel ends up storing in the abdominal fat area instead of just cortisol being low, you going into that natural diurnal rhythm. Now, in a perfect world, you'd meditate and calm down, but who has time for that? Not everyone has time to sit down and meditate. There's interesting evidence, and there's some cool things that we can do that reduce salivary cortisol super fast. So in this video, I'll give you that straight playbook, that straight trick. But I also have two other simple things that you can do. One is a supplement that's very effective, and another one is a little habit that you can follow that's going to make a big difference. Here's something that might be kind of helpful for you too if you're dealing with cortisol at night. We're starting to see that brain levels of creatine can make a big difference in just our resilience and our stress response. I went ahead and I put a link for 54% off Create creatine gummies. These are one of the only creatine gummies on the market that actually have what they say they have in them. In fact, there was a study that came out or a report that came out that looked at all the different creatine gummies and Create was one of the few that actually had adequate amounts of creatine in them. So they're allulose sweetened, so it offsets a little bit of the carbohydrate intake. And they're just a really darn good tasting creatine gummy and a great way to get your creatine levels up in a way that the entire family might enjoy. So that link is down below for up to 54% off creates gummies. So in addition to creatine, let's talk about this quick thing you can do. I'm going to throw it right out there for you, but we need to break down how to use it because if you do it at the wrong time, it kind of throws the rhythm off a little bit, okay? So we look at a study that was published in Frontiers of Sleep, and it found that doing a simple four, seven, eight breathing technique reduced salivary cortisol dramatically. Now, what does that mean? What is four, seven, eight? It's simply breathing in for four seconds, holding for seven and exhaling for eight. And you do this for seven, eight, 10 times around. So we're talking a very minimal time commitment here. And what this does is it downregulates the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis overdrive. One of the reasons that our cortisol levels get so high in the evening and end up leading to higher visceral fat is because stress accumulates throughout the day. And then all of a sudden you come home and you have this big cortisol dump that's trying to help you acclimate to that. Well, that is the adrenal system just overreacting, right? The hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So this simple method of breathing changes this entirely. It shifts that tone away. But we're also seeing in the literature that it reduces salivary cortisol. Why is this so important? Because these little few minute things, three, four minutes, this is a catalyst, okay? The cataclysmic effect of reducing cortisol top down has metabolic downstream effects beyond your wildest beliefs. Like it's crazy. Cortisol is like this major linchpin in so much of this. Another thing that you could do along with this is if you nasal breathe through this, now we've talked about this with Andrew Huberman before, we know this is a thing, but you have in the parasitous cavity, in the paranasal cavity, you have these receptors that signal or recognize when you're breathing through your nose. Think about it, if your mouth is open, it signals the body you're stressed. You're probably running from an animal or in a fight or flight mode. But if you're breathing through your nose, you're telling the brain you're calm. So the increase in nitric oxide actually allows the blood vessels to dilate, allows the body to cool, and ultimately allows cortisol to come down. So doing this through your nose, makes a huge, huge effect. Okay, I promised you I'd talk about some other things, but what if doing this at the wrong time could actually backfire on you? Well, the one time that you don't really want to be breathing like this is when you're trying to upregulate a whole lot. Okay, so hear me out. This kind of breathing is very good at downregulating you and calming you down. And most of the time you want to be in that state. But it's not so much that you don't want to do this right before you exercise. It's more so there's different methods of breathing. Like before you exercise and you want to kind of get more amped up, something like more of a box breathing. Something like even a two in, two hold, two out, two hold. Like shorter box breathing is better for upregulating, right? But most of the time doing this kind of four, seven, eight breathing is really good to just bring you down and calm your brain down. Breathing in general, you can manipulate to do all kinds of cool things. But what are some of the other things I was going to talk about? I told you I'd give you some other tools. We talked about this breathing trick that reduces cortisol really fast, but there's evidence now that theanine has a huge impact on cortisol as well. And we're talking a literal like 200 milligram low dose of the stuff. So in this case, there's a study published in Neurology and Therapy where they induced stress in human subjects by giving them like a stressful math test. That would induce stress for me. And what they found is that 
with or without theanine. The with theanine group ended up having reductions in salivary cortisol, and it was pretty significant. So they measured that within the hour. So they didn't have the same stress response to the test. They were calmer, and their cortisol was literally lower. And the way that theanine does this, we used to think it just cooled the body down and that triggered a stress release, but it actually crosses the blood-brain barrier and influences what's called GABA. So it makes your brain calmer, okay? So it influences GABA, but it also seems to modulate serotonin. So it's actually making it so serotonin binds easier to the receptor and you're calmer. But also, serotonin is upstream of melatonin. So serotonin converts into melatonin. So if you think about this, if you're dealing with high cortisol, if you're stressed out, this is like a double whammy. Not only do you reduce cortisol, but you help yourself sleep, which then reduces cortisol the next day and resets these metabolic things that affect you with insulin resistance and visceral fat accumulation. Such minimal time and money commitments for these little things. Okay, so now we've covered the breathing. We've covered this really inexpensive theanine in utilization. But then what about another way to reduce the stress in the brain so that your body is better at regulating that cortisol clock. Okay, I've talked about this before. It's saffron, which you could use as a spice, you could use as a supplement, whatever you want to go for. So we've seen in the literature now that what saffron does is it reduces stress or oxidative stress in the suprachiasmatic nucleus region of the brain. This region of the brain is really, really important for just regulating those diurnal cues. Okay, so if we are tilted off in that, then we don't produce cortisol at the right time. Our sleep-wake cycle is out of whack. So saffron is like a circadian reset, and we're seeing strong evidence with it. Dr. Andrew Huberman talked about this one a lot too. But we're also now starting to see that it seems to influence GABA as well. You've seen from the neuroscientists I've had on my channel that GABA is really important. Okay, it's the same kind of thing that alcohol makes you feel like loosey-goosey and good, except without having the intoxication part. So really important for that. So now we have these simple three tools. We could do the four, seven, eight breathing. We can use 200 milligrams of theanine, which is quite dirt cheap. And we can use saffron, even in our cooking, or there's actual supplement forms of saffron that are appearing now. Really simple, down to earth, easy things that you can do. Now, I did some other videos talking about visceral fat and actually a new fasting method that seems to reduce 33% more visceral fat. So I linked out to that video right here. As always, keep it locked in here. I'll see you tomorrow.